Okay, Tegra. Um, we, we felt that uh, the world was changing, that we were going to put computers in everything. The idea that it used to be in servers, then now in some PCs, but in the future, computers will disappear. It'll disappear in the sense that it'll just be everywhere. It'll be literally everywhere. And so we wanted to start investing in processors that has the same visual beauty and the same interactive capability that we're known for, um, but in computers that, that are, are literally everywhere. Literally everywhere. In cars, in stores, in glasses, in watches. It doesn't matter where it is. In phones and tablets. Anything that has a display in the future will have a visual computer inside. Anything with a display. And whereas when we first came into the world in 1993, 1993 there were each year about 100 million CRT displays sold. 100 million CRT displays sold. Now, now, this year, two and a half billion high definition displays sold each year. And by 2016, 2017, 2018, about that time frame, it's going to double again. The number of displays that needs to be driven by little tiny processors is growing exponentially. We're surrounded by displays. And so we started this roadmap called Tegra. Our first GP, our first Tegra, um, I, we won't say anything about uh, because it didn't turn out that well. We were just learning. We were just learning. And Tegra 2 uh, was the world's first dual core mobile processor. Tegra 3 was the world's first quad core. And we invented this idea called the energy saving core. The observation was, gee, CPUs were so abundant, why don't we create four that are for high performance, but create one that is extremely low power, called a four plus one architecture. Just about everybody in the future are going to use this type of architecture. We invented it so that you could have very low power when you're just using it to watch movies, listening to music, read a book. But when you go play a game or access a website, you want to power on those quad CPUs, get the job done, and go back to sleep. Tegra 3 was the world's first quad core. Tegra 4 introduced two new ideas. We integrated for the first time a software-defined radio, modem that is completely processed in a new type of architecture that is called a deep execution processor running modem protocol stack in extremely low power. And we introduced a second idea called computational camera. Using mathematics, using the CPU and the GPU to work together to take sensor information from your camera, from your image sensors, and create, using image processing, surprising effects. Like, for example, you, you don't have to take two shots to create HDR. You create one instantaneous shot to create HDR. For example, it could track your face. It could track an object while the object is still moving. So if you ever try to take a picture of a, of a kid, um, uh, you're constantly refocusing. Now you don't have to do that. You simply touch, it tracks, and now as the object moves, it stays in focus. And while it stays in focus, it's changing in real time its exposure necessary for HDR. All of that is made possible by our computational camera. So the question is, what do you do next? You've done so much. What do you do next? Well, our next generation GPU, our next generation mobile processor, Tegra, is called Logan. This generation was called Wayne. Now it's called Tegra 4. The next version is called Logan. Logan has something that we've been dying to bring to the world for so long. It is almost the reason why we came. Logan incorporates, for the first time, our most advanced GPU. It's the world's first mobile processor with CUDA. You're not the only one 
who's been holding their breath. I'll tell you. Logan incorporates a Kepler GPU. It is full CUDA 5 because it's the most modern GPU. Out of the box is OpenGL 4.3. And it does everything that a modern computer ought to do. Does everything a modern computer ought to do. We should see Logan this year, and we should see Logan in production very easily early next year. That's called Logan. Well, let me show you one more, because I have a feeling several of you in the audience have heard of Logan. Let me show you one more. The next generation beyond Logan has um, a peculiar name. The next generation is called Parker. Parker brings three ideas to the market, three ideas to mobile processing. The first is, I know you've been waiting, so have I. It is the first processor with Denver. World's first high-performance 64-bit ARM processor coupled with our next generation GPU, Maxwell. And in order to put all of that in the hands, in your hands, in a phone, in a tablet, we're using FinFET 3D transistors. That's Parker. You know, the observation that is amazing here is, and I don't know if you guys noticed the scale earlier. The GPU was increasing about two times every other year. Basically, still sustaining very naturally Moore's Law. Because parallel computing has the benefit of not having to push for just frequency, we can have the benefit of pushing frequency and the number of transistors. And because parallel computing is still in its nascent stage, there's so many new ideas we can still incorporate architecturally to improve its performance. There's still a lot of learning ahead of us. But it's still two times every other year. What's really remarkable here is in five years' time, we're going to increase the performance of Tegra by 100 times. 100 times. Now, Moore's Law would suggest about eight. Well, that's a perfect example of disruptive technology. It happened back in the good old days when the PC industry came along. The rate of innovation in the beginning was really quite staggering, quite staggering. And so you should expect that every generation, every generation, the Tegra processor brings something that is just enormously surprising from the past. Now, I just can't wait. I can't wait any longer, all this talk. I can't wait any longer. I'm like you. I want to see ARM and CUDA now. I want to see CUDA on ARM right now. And so, uh, maybe next time. <laughs> and so, so the guys went off and they said, you know, Jensen, you want to see CUDA on ARM right now? Well, we can. We're going to build a super, super low power GPU, a new GPU that you guys have never seen. And we're going to combine it with ARM, and we're going to create the world's most powerful ARM computer. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to Logan's girlfriend, Kayla. Kayla is a really interesting little thing. Kayla has a Tegra 3 because it has a PCI Express. We added to a brand new, very low power GPU. And if not for all of the connectors we wanted to put on here, Kayla would be a little tiny thing. Now the thing that's really amazing is this. Logan's gonna be the size of a dime. This is gonna fit into a chip the size of a dime. Require no fans, no heat sinks, and will likely be higher performance than Kayla. But let's just take a look at what Kayla can do, shall we? All right, Bass, show me Kayla. All right, so this is Kayla. Kayla is uh, running real-time ray tracing. And this real-time ray tracer is, <laughs> it's You 
you could see the transparencies, the reflection, the refraction, the caustics. I mean, it's really quite amazingly beautiful. This is, remember, this is Kayla. Okay, it just launched smoke. These are all the same demos that we've been showing throughout the years on these massive G-forces and massive Teslas. Oh, wow, you're killing me. Open GL geometry shaders. The point here is the entire modern software stack that we know of, the most advanced computing software stack we know of, CUDA 5, OpenGL with programmable ge uh, geometry shaders, Linux, physics, physics processing, all running at the same time on this little tiny computer. Pretty amazing. Hey, guys, thank you very much. Good job.